So Turkey may invade without securing a green light from both guarantor powers of the post-2019 ceasefires. And if that happens, um, that will be devastating in humanitarian terms for the, for the displaced people on the ground. It will be devastating in security terms. And I think that it will really represent um, a massive deterioration in Turkey-US relations, just given the degree of opposition to the invasion that there is, given the degree of opposition that there was to the 2019 invasion, um, would be for stability in the region. At the end of the day, you know, I think if the U.S. were serious about resolving this, um, what they would have to do would be to, first of all, stop supporting Turkey's war effort, cut them off from these weapons and the security assistance, which is something that Congress is already inclined to do, as we've been discussing today. Okay, build on that. You know, stop selling them any of these weapons and this technology. Don't give them material that you know they're going to use to invade Northern Syria if you don't want them to invade Northern Syria. They would need to do that. Um, and they'd need to, I think, start looking differently. You know, stop accepting Turkey's excuses about terrorism and sit down and say, you know, we're not going to back a military solution to this problem anymore. This is a political problem. It has a political solution. You need to solve it politically. And I think that if the US were to do something like that, the steps that we'd have to see would be real criticism of the repression of pro-peace political forces in Turkey, real pressure to um, you know, release all of the imprisoned HDP members, politicians, activists, you know, those tens of thousands of people. We'd need to see um, pressure to stop criminalizing peace activism and dissent. Um, and we need to see a real reevaluation of the criminalization of the Kurdish movement. You know, the PKK has to be removed from the terrorism list. Total overhaul of all the ways that the United States has supported Turkey's war on the Kurdish movement and the Kurdish people so far. It would be a big task, but at the end of the day, um, and what's essential to know is that the U.S. built Turkey's F-16 program through collaboration between the U.S. government, U.S. military companies and, uh, you know, government officials and corporations in Turkey at the height of the conflict between the Turkish state and the Kurdish movement when the Turkish government was committing serious human people, largely with U.S. weapons. And this was known in the United States at the time uh, to the point where Congress actually called for investigations and tried to restrict the sales of some weapons like fighter jets, like helicopters, those that were used in the most destructive human rights violations in cases of village demolitions and atrocities like these. But the U.S. actually, in order to continue facilitating the creation of Turkey's F-16 program, of selling these jets to Turkey, giving Turkey the ability to co-produce them, gave credence to Turkey's narratives covering up the misuse of US origin weapons. So in cases where Congress had explicitly asked for evidence that US origin weapons were used in the State Department that was mandated to answer that question, uh, did not find all of the available evidence that human rights organizations and legal processes later found about the use of these weapons, including specific cases involving F-16s, and allowed Turkey to repeat its narrative that these weapons were not being used in war crimes. So this was so important uh, to the government in the United States, the military industrial complex in the United States, that they were willing to cover for Turkey using advanced weapons in order to build the program, even when Congress was concerned about it.